cogent advice, and inspiration from real self-made millionaires, welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I am Jamie Masters, and today on the show, we have Millie Brown. Now, she was one of the first hybrid business model for publishing in 1994. You can check her out at brownbooks.com. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for the invitation. How did you know? Because 1994 was way early, at least in my opinion, when it comes to knowing that the book publishing industry was on its uh, final leg. So how did you know? Well, I was just talking about that this morning because we are in the process of uh, doing some huge things that someone at, the, at a very high level in New York just made a comment last night that we are the face of publishing now, that traditional publishing, and this is someone who's probably going to be coming on board with us, that has been with one of the big five for many, many, many years. And, um, I, you know, I, I think that in the conversation I had this morning, if I could just recount that, uh, <clears throat> sometimes if you just use your common sense, and, you know, I um, looked at publishing in 1994, and, and I'm going to just correct one little thing you said. Mm -hmm. I was the first hybrid publisher. The first. First. There was the very, no very one, first. The very, very first. There was no one. And I got to tell you, it, it was it was really hard when you uh, decide that you're going to be a publisher, but you're not going to be a publisher like publishing is done and you tell people you have the chutzpah to tell people go to their conferences and tell them you're a publisher you just don't do it like they do it and they look at you like you're crazy and they um they it, it, they certainly made sure that they uh told me to my face not behind my back to my face that i was not a publisher and that was not how publishing was done and i couldn't be a publisher and you know, so you have to have uh, somewhat of a conviction. Uh, I had thought it through and I didn't like the traditional model. I just felt that it was unfair to authors. And, you know, I'm really on the side of the authors because I understand intellectual property. And whether it's intellectual property for the recording industry or for the film industry or for, you know, uh, you know, just uh, Broadway plays, uh, intellectual property without it, there would be none of those industries. So I happen to feel that the the author in the publishing industry, those are the VIPs. Those are the people that without them, we wouldn't have books. So for to see when I came to publishing and saw that they were getting uh, taken advantage of, I'll be kind. Um, I thought that's not right. And I um, so I created a business model. And I said, and it wasn't anything genius. I just said, I'm going to create a business model like the rest of the world operates. I mean, how difficult is that? Everybody I know, and I'm sure everybody you know, charges you for their services. Uh, you find the best you can find, and then you figure it out. You have to do your due diligence, and then you pay. And then they're experts or authorities in their, in their particular field. So I said, I'm going to create a business model where I'm going to charge the authors for my expertise I am going to be their publisher. And the, the, the only difference that I wanted at that point in time is that when the books sell, I'm going to give all the, the profits to the authors. Now, what I, I think I understood that New York didn't understand is that if the author is going to make all the money, the author is going to hustle. The author is going to be that much more motivated to get out there and do the interviews and travel and do signings and presentations because they get all the money. Um, so I thought if I if I merge the synergies of, um, you know, you, you have an entrepreneurial publisher and I find an entrepreneurial author, I think it's magical because we will work very, very hard because it's 
to the benefit of both of us because when my company's successful, they're helping me build my brand early, early on. So I've only taken the best of books. I have been very discriminatory and I would have made a lot more money if I had published anybody and everybody. But no, I, I just knew I had to stay the course and not get tempted. Um, even when times are bad, it was, you know, every book has my name on it. So, um, you know, you fast forward to today and we are, um, you know, we are definitely at the, the fore of, um, I've had several people in the traditional publishing world comment that we are the future of publishing. These are people that have been around a long time. And uh, my goal was never to replace traditional publishing because there's a lot of people that are not entrepreneurial. They, they would not be good with my business model or they couldn't afford it. Some people just can't afford uh, to, to do it the right way because if you self-publish, I'm not a fan of self-publishing. But uh, I am the, the original um, hybrid. I don't like that, the word hybrid. Uh, it's not sexy enough. But I don't know what to call me that, um, it, it, you know, the industry came up with the word hybrid a couple of years ago. And I went, I don't, whatever, you know. So anyway, that's awesome. Sorry, that was a long-winded answer. Yes. Well, I, I, you said the original. I'm like, the, you're the OG of, you're, you're the original gangster of, of, of the hybrid unsexy name uh, model. Well, well especially the back first then. Time, I will tell you the first time that someone called me a disruptor. I was a little taken aback because I thought, what? Uh, I didn't know that that was a good thing. Uh, because yes, I, I, it was a David and Goliath story because here I was, um, you know, I came barging right into a traditional industry and um, um, just kind of uh, was, uh, it, it just changed it slightly in the very beginning. And today we are, you know, I have people turning down traditional contracts and coming to me. I love that. At the beginning, though, asking authors to pay, that was so different, right? Did you have a hard time getting people to understand, like, hey, let's do it like this instead? I, I love that question because I have got a story that is as fresh as yesterday because it is so, I was so traumatized. Uh, I went to um I, when i came up with the concept i could not wait to get out and tell authors all about my new idea because no longer did they have to find an agent no longer longer did they have to grovel to get a contract um, um and they make all the money and so i there was a romance writers of america conference that came to dallas and i I couldn't wait to go and tell all of the authors there about, you know, my new business model. And I really, in a way, thought I was like um, salvation had come to authors, you know, that they now had an opportunity to be published and, and get their book out there. And um, so I, I was so excited. I went to the conference. And what I remember is I found a group of ladies and we were standing there. And I wrangled them and I was telling them all about my new business model. They're going to own the rights and um, they're going to be involved in the process. They're going to, you know, um, we're going to work collaboratively. And um, and they're just staring at me, just staring at me. And there were about four or five of them and I'm going on and on. So finally, one woman said. So in other words, we pay you. And I, I thought, oh, wow, okay, that wasn't exactly, I said, all right, maybe I forgot to tell you the part about you, yes, you pay me, but then you get all the money when the book sells. And they're still staring at me. I mean, no emotion, just still staring at me. And she said, but but we pay you. What, the, what is, I, I was speechless. I couldn't understand that this that they were so hung up on that. And I went home that night and I was, I'm sure I was, I just, you know, I was so dejected. I, I didn't know what had happened, that they didn't think it was as wonderful as I did. So a couple of weeks later, I happened to be at SMU. I don't remember what I was doing there, but I was talking to a gentleman in the hall and I was telling him about my new business model and so I told him and he looked at me and he said, so in other words, 
I pay you. And then when the book sells, I get all the money. And I said, yes. (laughs) And he said, when can I come see you? I thought, well, um, (laughs) okay. And of course I left, I left that day thinking, what was the difference? All right, what happened here? And what I, I, it didn't take me very long to figure out is my model does not appeal to everybody. If someone is not uh, comfortable with risk reward, it's scary. And, and traditional publishing had just been, traditional publishing was created for a certain group of people. There are, and, and, and shall I call them writers who just want to write. They don't want to promote. They don't want to think about sales for the most part. I mean, obviously there's all kinds of writers, but they, you know, the thought that they're going to be in business for themselves, that this is, you know, they don't really like that part of it. Whereas I was tapping into the crowd that understood that a book was a product to be sold. And if it sold, made money, they wanted to make money. So I was looking for entrepreneurs, not really writers. As a matter of fact, the first time that dawned on me, I kind of giggled a little bit to myself. And I thought, <clears throat> I'm a publisher, but just not for writers. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we've come full circle. I publish for everybody now. So, See, I love that story because the ideal customer who your avatar is made such a huge difference and people could be pounding on the doors of people that are like, oh, I pay you and and not realizing there's a whole pool of other people that are excited about the I pay you part. Correct. And so now I, you know, when I talk to people, I, I don't, if somebody doesn't, and, and there's another facet that I didn't mention is um, sometimes people... You know, and I don't want to diminish, you know, and say anything negative. If somebody gets a contract with Simon Schuster today, pop the champagne, celebrate. I get it. There are a lot of writers to them. That is validation Mm -hmm. because they have grown up every, every class they've ever taken. Everybody talks about getting the contract. And so that is to them is their arrival as a writer. Um, and if that's more important to them than um, either making money or growing their business, because books are a great tool in that, then, um, you know, I can't I can't say anything negative against it. You know, some people just want to see their book in print and there's all kinds of reasons. And I know exactly who's a good fit for brown books. And who will be, who will just love us and will love them. And I think we do a really, really good job at, I, you know, a lot of people won't believe this, but I talk to people on the phone when I see, you know, the manuscripts come in, people call. I will, I will schedule 15 minutes with just about anybody. And um, because it's an interview, I am looking at them as much as I'm looking at their manuscript because <clears throat> there are certain people that, I know that are going to be great for us and we're going to be great for them. And there's other people that it's just not going to be a good fit. So this is about the relationship. And I say that it's all over our website and, you know, a lot of people get really flustered and they can't believe that I'm, that it's really Millie Brown talking to them. And it's like, should I be in my ivory tower or what would I be doing up there? (laughs) I love talking to the people. I love the, the personal connection. So yes. You call and I will talk to you and uh, don't be surprised. (laughs) I love all this. And I think what's so important is like you were talking about conviction beforehand, because sometimes when when there's rough years, you'll take on writers potentially who don't have entrepreneurial skills or somebody would, you wouldn't. Um, And then they'll be like, oh, this is really difficult, (laughs) right? They're making it harder than it needs to be because they're not sticking with their values. How have you just always had that much conviction or how how did you sort of work with that? So you kept going. Um, the the simple answer is yes. And, you know, I wonder about it sometimes. And I thought maybe when I go back and write my book, then I'll have an opportunity to sort of uh, psychoanalyze uh, what fuels me and just, I, um, I have been pretty much successful at everything I've ever done, because failure is not an option. Um, And I think if people would just come with that mindset that um, it's not going to be easy and we, I don't care what it is. Nothing's easy. 
Um, and if it's easy, then everybody's doing it and you're not going to make any money. So you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, I have always uh, surrounded myself with uh, an industry that I that I liked with the components. Um, I love everything about the publishing industry. And I particularly love, I love it when somebody walks in to uh, to meet with me and they don't have a manuscript. And I've had people that have come in, they don't even have an idea for a book, but they need a book for a particular reason. And usually I've had people that want to sell their business and they know that a book will help them toward the end or somebody who um, just start, a lot of it is business related because a book, there's nothing, nothing more powerful than a book. So I, um, I love to, to start from the very, very beginning and come up with the idea for the book and then bring all, everyone together, whether it's the ghostwriter, um, you know, because sometimes busy people or, you know, sometimes people just aren't writers. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying you're not a writer. I'm not a hairdresser. I'm not, you know, there's a lot of things I can't do. So um, I, uh, I love being able, I just love the industry. I love the publishing industry. I love sales. I love marketing. I love PR. So I'm not just into creating the book. I love that part. But if it doesn't do well, I'm not happy um, <clears throat> because I, we didn't do all that hard work to have a book go out into the world and not do well. So we're really emotionally invested in our authors, even though they make all the money. But then when they make all the money and they're successful and they're happy they'll come back and write another book and they'll tell all of their friends and they'll have second printing so it really is a wonderful cycle and circle of, of success well and a lot's changed since 1994 just with online marketing right oh. so so we talk about the success of a book and it you've probably completely changed what you did then to what you do now for sales do you help them with the marketing side and, and can you give us some tips on what that looks yeah. like now Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Um, well, I, uh, I, you know, I, we are three companies. We're actually three companies. Brown Books Publishing Group is the publishing house. And then we have the agency uh, at Brown Books, which is PR, marketing, and social media. And then we have the distribution company. So we're everything that an author needs under one roof, which was my dream from the very beginning. Um, and uh, it's much easier for an author to come in and have everything totally 100% turnkey. They don't have to go anywhere for anything. And as I like to explain to them, we have a little, we have a, a little um, saying here in Texas, then they only have one neck to choke <laughs> if something goes wrong. Of course, that's a Texan saying. That makes total sense. <laughs> So, uh, and I, you know, I stand good for anything and everything. If I tell somebody something, of course I can't control the world, but my agency does a darn good job at promoting. And I have my, matter of fact, my, um, uh, my director of uh, PR, uh, my PR manager, um, I recruited out of New York. She um, worked for three of the biggest houses in publicity, in PR, uh, in New York. So she has those very valuable media contacts. She uh, has been doing this for over 10 years. And so she came fully charged, ready to go, and is so incredibly successful with the big media, not the little local newspapers. She, she really goes after the big ones. But, you know, to your, to your question, um, how it's changed, my, my very first PR director, was someone uh, she used to call herself Etta Hopper. I don't even know if you'll know who that is, but anyway, if anybody older is listening, they'll know who that is. That was a Hollywood socialite who um, just loved uh, the media and celebrities. But um, her tool was um, she had a a telephone and a Rolodex, and she'd go in her office every day. And she had a Rolodex and a telephone, and that was PR. And she was very, very good, very good at it. Um, but obviously today, um, we, we could, the, when I talk about PR, marketing, and social media, you really, really need all three. And PR is, um, as I was saying, our PR manager, um, she's going to get the 
the media interviews. She's going to um, help get, uh, whether it's print or radio or television, um, because you have to have publicity, you know, a nice story in People Magazine will go a long way to helping someone be successful. But the marketing, our marketing person is focused on getting, working with the bookstores, getting the books into the bookstores, getting the signing set up. Uh, book reviews are very, very, very valuable. Um, and right now, we were just looking at a list this morning that the big book reviewers, the ones you really, really want, but are the hardest to get, your book has to be in their hands uh, at least six months before it's printed. So this is, that's why, you know, it's one of the reasons why self-publishing drives me crazy because people will wait till a book comes off the press and then they start figuring out how they're going to sell it. Well, you, you have missed so much when you self-publish. This is an industry that is uh, very structured. And if you don't do it right, the ship is going to sail without you. As a matter of fact, we have sales reps. We have six regions all across the country. We have uh, many sales reps. Um, at last count, it's somewhere around 100-ish. Uh, and these are pros. These are people that have been in the industry for decades. And they have all the contacts. They know who buys books. And they go out in their region, whether it's out on the West Coast, they, they sell to Costco. If obviously, if it's a... On the, the, the southeast, they go into Walmart. If it's in the north, they go into Barnes & Noble. But they have all their special accounts, and they sell to anybody and everybody in this country that buys books. If it's, if it's a coffee table, a beautiful art book, they'll go into museums. So um, their job, and they make money on a commission basis. So they, they have to have good books to sell, and um, we have great relationships with our sales reps. There was one company that when we originally contacted them, they really did not get us and they just turned us down. And um, eventually, a couple of years later, we got a phone call from them and uh, they had because they can see our numbers and they can see our growth. And that was you know because we were not the traditional, we were different. You know, some people have just chosen to sit back and watch. And uh, they came to us and wanted to represent us. And uh, this past April, we just uh, started working with them and they're the best in their region. And um, so, you know, having all these ancillary opportunities with people that are helping you, it's, you know, I, I just, you know, to think of an author out there by themselves trying to come up with all of the, the all of this, they can't, please don't do that to yourself. You know, I want my authors just to be an author and their job should go out and get, get on the stage, talk about your your book. Um, I want you to just do nothing but um, um, be an author and, you know, do signings and you be the celebrity. Don't You shouldn't be thinking about the business and where to sell it and how to sell it and how much to charge. Let, let a publisher, it's going to cost you, it's going to cost you more, but you know, you get results. You know, I tell people all the time where, you know, people come to us for results. And I know that that is what we are tasked with. And if it's humanly possible, we'll do whatever we have to do. Uh, what is today? Uh, today? Uh, Sunday night. I had uh, one of my one of our authors, brand new author. He's a McKinsey alumni, uh, and he he calls himself a fixer. That you know he was you know, tasked with going into major corporations and fixing them, and um, he came and did a presentation about his book to my staff Sunday night at my house. And I had a chef, I had it catered, and it was just a lovely evening. Of, um, of, of really, was, the more that you know about an author, the more you know about their message, the better you can sell it. So we immerse ourselves in our authors so that we can then pitch them, market them, promote them. Uh, social media, obviously, a lot of some, a lot of our authors are older, um, older, very, very, very successful people. And social media, you know, I, I get a kick out of it, but uh, when I asked them, you know, gee, are you involved with social media? And and I, you could tell me what they said. Yeah. <laughs> they say, yeah. I have a Facebook page. 
And that's and and then I have to go. Well, that's not exactly what I meant. <laughs> but we have been able. We we can do everything for them turnkey. And at first, they I don't know. You know, they're they're afraid of putting stuff out there. But I have um, one of our clients. Uh, it, it, I get a kick out of it. Um, you you talk to Cassidy, and Cassidy is is now the voice, and uh, and she does the promotion of the social media for an 86 year old billionaire. <laughs> and it's so funny because she studied him. She knows him she, because he, and now he's kind of getting into it. And I suspect in the not too distant future, um, he's going to want to kind of put his hands in there and kind of put up some things out there, but if not, we'll continue to do it for him. But it's so important as you know, social media is uh, it is vital, and sometimes it is it is uh, the most important when it comes to certain topics and certain books, depending on the demographic. So you have there's so much that you have to do, uh, and it, it can be overwhelming, and it really, really, really does take a village, and we are that village. Yeah, when it comes when to it, social media or any of these things, the skill sets. Like just learning Instagram and its algorithms and Facebook. And then in, you know, two years, it's going to change anyway. So none of that's going to matter from beforehand. I think that's what people don't understand when they're getting into the game of any online marketing. They're like, oh, it's a humongous space. It's not, you know, it's like horseback riding. There's a million different types and you have no idea if you don't know, right? And then you try it once and you're like, I suck at it. I'm just going to stop, right? That's usually, <laughs> that's usually what ends up happening. Correct. And again, um, you know, I have some authors that they want to do it they want to do their own social and I watch them and you know um, I have had to you know make that phone call and you know tell them do not sell your book that is the worst thing you can do you you want to be friends with people you want to be likable you want to be you don't want someone every time that you they see your name they, they know somebody's going to be saying buy my book you know it's just that's the last thing in the world you know it's just soft sales and it's mentioning it in passing and it's just there's so much that an author who only has one book and is really excited about selling it has to to learn and sometimes they learn at their own expense and it's kind of sad because uh, they cost themselves a lot of money um, and they think they're saving money by doing it themselves but it's like anything else you know I just I I can't make people do anything. I can just try to to reason with them and uh, let the professionals. I have a great, great, great respect for professionals. And, um, you know, some people just always want to get the cheapest and uh, they get the, the, the they don't get the results they could have. So how long are your marketing plans typically? I know you're saying like some things are six months in advance. What What is a typical length of a book sale? Uh, marketing plan. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, tell you something you've never heard before. Okay, this is revolutionary because um, um, my PR manager, who came from New York, when she came here, we were talking about some of our authors and some of the books we were promoting, and I was introducing her to to the authors and the subject matter, and just going over what we had been doing for them. And I mentioned one of our books that we've been promoting for five years, and she said, five years. Um, well, well, you know, how could you promote a book for five years?" And I said, well, it's just really kind of simple. If it keeps selling, you keep promoting. If you quit promoting, it'll quit selling. It's just, it just kind of works that way. And she really could not comprehend that because in New York, they will promote a book for a month or two, uh, depending on whether you're an A-list author, B-list author, C-list author. They get, um, you know, obviously John Grisham. They'll They'll promote his book. They've got they got a big big budget for him. But for a new author, a debut author, not so much. I mean, they're going to throw it out there, and if it doesn't catch on fire right away, they're going to pull it. And they've got too many. They got too many coming after it. So um, basically, to answer your question, um, it's just you can keep promoting, and you should you should keep promoting your book. Um, 
for as long as you're you're noticing that it's still selling. And if it stops selling, then you need to step back and reevaluate what are you doing and has you know the environment changed? Uh, has the world changed? Is this a subject that people aren't interested in anymore? In anymore, it's run its course, um, or have you just been going down, you know, the wrong path, and you need to reevaluate uh, how to get out there with the message? Uh, so it's just a constant. Um, it's just a constant way to make sure that you are um, always evaluating and assessing the the world as it is and your market. And um, being being flexible and changing because um, you know we've always got a couple of pitches up our sleeve. If this pitch doesn't work, this pitch might. You know, there's more than one way to sell a book, and sometimes you don't even sell the book. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is that there are people that are going to be turned off if you're pitching your book. Uh, whereas you might have a great angle personally or your company might have or what you do for a living. Um, you know, so don't always be pitching the book because the media knows that you're just wanting free airtime from them. <laughs> They're not dumb. Yes, totally. Not, not at all. So when it, when it comes to your KPIs that you sort of track for the marketing side for authors, do you care about platform side? Are you just caring about sort of book sales or what are some of the, the key performance indicators that you're paying attention to? Do you have funnels on book sales? Like, is it more of a platform based or is it just mostly results on book sales? Yeah, this is, you know, a lot, a lot of the results sometimes are um, a surprise to even us uh, because you just don't know. I've seen so many books that I knew could not miss that um, did and uh, and you know it's just um, and then some books that you just really were a little bit not nervous about took off um, like a rocket ship. So you know there's when you talk about a platform, I know that the big the big publishing houses you have to have a platform, you have to have so many people. You know I, I find that. Um, um, that's a nice word. Um, you know, we create it for our authors. I don't require that they come in here because that's, again, taking advantage. That's a slam dunk. It's, it, for instance, um, when I've published someone with celebrity status, that's a slam dunk. You know, you don't have to sell them. All you have to do, you could get an intern, say, hey, call these people and say they're going to be in town on such and such date and book them. And that's, you know, that's how hard we have to work. But with um, authors that aren't world famous, um, you have to you have to really be sharp and you have to figure out how are we going to promote this person? And I like that better. I know maybe that sounds a little crazy, but um, I, I would rather have to work and be creative and use my brain than to have a lay, lay up with, you know, somebody who has a platform of millions of people. And, and, and I just, uh, that's, that doesn't excite me as much as someone. I like what they do. I like their message. I like the subject matter. And now we have to roll up our sleeves and figure out how to make it work. And um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't require that they have a platform uh, because I want to build it for them. I want to, I want to help them create that platform <laughs> with David and Goliath. You like, you're the little guy helping the little guy <laughs> that, that needs yes. the help. <laughs> and, and, yes, and, and I almost said, and that'll make me a big guy. Ooh, no. You know, I just, I like, uh, you know, I've never envisioned my, you know, I, I like, I like the, I want, I think one of the big, big, big advantages of our size is I love the fact that we can get together in a, I've got a big conference room, but uh, we can get the staff together and when we have a staff meeting, we will have in the staff meeting design and project management and editorial and PR and marketing and social media. And then the the uh, basically the, the 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 executives of the company and we all give our input. And this author is getting you know the value of all these people knowing about them um, and giving their feedback 
on how to help their book be the best and what we can do to, to market it. So they just get, um, and even with distribution, you know, we've monitored their books and we're constantly looking at um, how it's selling and if it's selling, if it's not selling, we need to talk about that because some, you know, especially, uh, you know, during COVID, obviously it was different. Nothing was, it was, it was, uh, there was a lot of with the bookstores being shut down. That was that was problematic, and distrib distributors, sales reps weren't weren't really working. But now we're back with a vengeance. It's very exciting. So, how do you find your ideal clients? Because you have such a skew of the right types of people. How have you built up the 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 network of the right clientele for yourself? You know, um, in the early days, um, I did a lot of lecturing. I would go out to colleges and universities. As a matter of fact, UNT, the University of North Texas, uh, is just uh, creating a Millie Brown Award that they are going to be uh, presenting um, October 15th. Um, it's my birthday, so I remembered it. <laughs> How could I forget it? I will have to be somewhere. But they are going to, they have a, the Mayborn Literary uh, Conference. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it is, it's pretty big. They've been doing it for 17 years. And um, every year they have a contest for the, for the best book. And so uh, because this year is was still disrupted by, you know, uh, COVID uh, next year, this year, they're going to tell everyone that um, uh, because I have offered to uh, publish the winner uh, and give them a traditional contract so they don't have to put up any money. I can't I can't give them a <laughs> I can't give them a, a publishing contract and then say, now you only owe me. <laughs> I don't think that'd be right. So I'm going to be, I'm going to publish it on my dime, and I'm going to give the proceeds. Uh, give a 20% contract. I'll give 10% to the author and 10% to UNT. And so um, that's going to be. When is this going to air? Because nobody knows about it yet. <laughs> uh, October 18th, actually. <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. It'll be, yeah, no, it'll be out there then. Because I just thought, oh, I think this is confidential. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> oh, <Perfect timing>. well. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, um, uh, so I, but to go back to your question, I used to go out and lecture and, and, and I loved talking to authors and I loved being in a room full of, you know, I mean, here would be a children's book author sitting next to a sci-fi author, sitting next to a cookbook author, sitting next to, and just a room full of people who had nothing in common except they wanted to be a writer. They wanted to have their book published. And I always felt good because I thought I, you know, I wanted to give them an overview of the publishing world and talk to them about uh, the, the reality of publishing so that they were hearing it from the horse's mouth. They weren't getting it secondhand from someone who may have been misinformed. But, um, you know, so I grew the business one author at a time. And I can tell you right now, I have got so many. Uh, this lady I'm going to be talking to at one o'clock today. Um, a great book. And I, she's coming back for, for, for more, but I'm going to talk her into doing bigger things because when she first published 15 years ago, I didn't have everything that I have today. So I, and it's a wonderful book. Um, I have a, an attorney who just retired. I published for him about 15, 20 years ago. He's coming in to meet with me next week about um, another book. Um, and I have a Spirituality of Success. That's a book that's on our um, spring list. And the author, I published him 20 years ago, and he's bringing it back out now as a second edition. And uh, 20 years ago, we sold his book in 28 different countries. So those those have all expired. So now we're going to go back to those countries and get a second bite at the apple. <laughs> So um, I, I just they keep coming back and back and back. So in addition with the new authors, you know, the, the people that I published for uh, previously coming back, it uh, it's just kept us growing and growing. And then we have lots of new ideas and we're um, uh, we have we're now getting agents that are bringing their authors to us. Uh, so we kind of crossed over that barrier. Uh, because How do you do that? Because they get paid good. from, yeah. So who do they, who does the agent get paid for then? 
we're cutting different deals. We're wheeling and dealing. And that's one thing that most people need to understand that an entrepreneur doesn't is not stuck in the mud. I mean, we, you know, it's just, you know, make me an offer. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we can come up with. And we will maybe will and deal. So, you know, whatever works. And if we want to book badly enough, who knows? <laughs> That's a great idea. And I think what's so important for especially newer people in like the three to five year of the business, everything feels like it takes so long. <laughs> and so because, it's uh, 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 because it does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Patience you know, is a virtue, people. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard. Uh, it is. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, just enjoy the journey. If you're constantly you know, I remember when I first started out, I had a, I thought I had it around my office somewhere. I had a, I had a wish, I called it my wish list. And I had on my wish list, new exercise clothes. I mean, I, you know, I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I had to, I, I had to make money to live. And, you know, uh, while I kept the business afloat and uh, glasses, I think, or contacts just on my wish list. You know, so you just have to, but that's, you know, that's fun to look back. And it just, it just took a long time and a lot of determination and an attitude that, um, you know, I knew that it was going to work because it made sense. Now, if it didn't make sense, then that's, you know, uh, then I wouldn't have done it. But I thought it through. And the fact that I I didn't realize it until one day I was talking to someone. And all of a sudden I looked at them and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm publishing for me. This is the publishing company that I would have wanted. And I never knew that for many, many, many years because I would like to be involved. I'm not going to let anybody put my name on something that I don't have the final say so on. Sorry, I'm just not going to do it. You know, it's like I want to I want to retain the rights because um, that's where the value long term could be. Um, I want to be something involved in the process. I'm not going to be a micromanager, but I'm going to hire the best people and then step back. But I'm going to be watching. And uh, so I, I love the business model because I would sign on with me. <laughs> course I would. <laughs> well, and like you said, enjoying the process, I think we discount that a little bit too much or we hear it as a cliche. But if you actually enjoy the process and it takes double the time, then it doesn't really matter. You're still doing the thing that you enjoy the whole entire time instead of being like, crap, I'm not going fast enough. Right? Well, and, and unless you're really financially in dire straits, I get that. Then a day can seem like a year and you may need to, you know, um, you may need to take a part-time job while you're, you know, you, you have to do what you got to do, but uh, you know, it's, it's never easy. And to be successful, I think every person, and you probably interviewed enough of them. You could, ooh, you could write a book about. <laughs> <laughs> I have a book actually traditionally that I will not do traditional ever again, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you do know what I'm talking about. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I can't tell you how many people that, I have published for that have previously published with traditional publishers and they many of them have now done two, three, four books with me. So, you know, um, you know, and one of them, one I published, made him famous. He and Wiley came to him and then he came back to us for the next book. And in the dedication, he wrote, uh, it's good to be back home. And I, that meant so much to me. It was like, oh, welcome, welcome home. <laughs> I, and I really appreciate what you just said before about getting a part-time job because that's that's part of your conviction. You're showing like, hey, I'm still not going to fail. A part-time job doesn't mean I'm quitting this dream. It just means it's going to take a little longer because I need to figure out my finances first. And yeah. a lot of people don't aren't willing to look or do that. And so I love that because failure is not an option, you're willing to do whatever wiggle room it takes in order to get what you want in the long run. Well, who would have, who would have, uh, you know, I have been known to say that if somebody had come into me with a book of fiction about this virus, it takes over the world and it shuts down Manhattan and, um, you know, people can't go out of their homes. And I, I might have said, you know, I, I don't know if I could publish this. I just don't think anybody's going to believe it. 
you know, who would have predicted it? Yeah. You just have to, you know, you just have to keep on keeping on however you do it. Yes, and be open and flexible. And it sounds like you totally are. I know we have to start wrapping up. So I'm going to ask the last question. What is one action listeners can take this week to help move them forward towards their goal of a million? I think it's what we just talked about. I, I, I really think that if people can just get it through their head, however they have to do it, depending on their personality, that failure they're not going to fail. That failure is not going to be an off. Uh, uh, maybe this, maybe go out, and this is going to be a little self-serving for the industry, but buy, uh, you know, books about people who were not overnight successes, people who struggled, people who, and, 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 and we didn't talk about this, but I started out doing books uh, in 1990, I created a company called Personal Profiles, and I would interview people and do books just for their family. So these were memoirs, or actually family histories. And I loved it when I would sit there and these people that were so successful now, and boy, they had some nosedives, and they had some days where they didn't know where the, the they were going to, how they were going to pay their staff, and they had all kinds of scary things that happened to them. And I think maybe if people who don't totally believe and I had days that I thought, well, you know, you know, you all you're human. You can't help what you think. Yeah, I mean you can get rid of the thoughts. It's like stop it. But um if, if people could just have conviction and if you got to if you don't feel you have it, go out and read some books on people who have struggled and how they ultimately became successful and you'll see that it hasn't it's not been easy for anybody everybody has a story and i don't care who they are i love that we need to know that we're all human even the most successful people have gone through this too tell us where we can find more about you online all of the different uh publishing group pieces that you've got or where we can follow you on social media well, uh, just go to brownbooks.com and we have all the contact information there. I think our website is, uh, I think our website's pretty good and I think it's pretty, uh, we're pretty transparent and I, and I like that. Um, in the old days, I used to have people say, you know, can I talk to some of your authors and now you can just go online and see them and if you can find them and look them up and talk to them, that's fine with me, <laughs> you know, but yeah, we're, we're very transparent and um, I'm always, always, always looking for good books and you don't have to have a million people on your platform. <laughs> <laughs> few, few. There's not many of those. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Millie. I really appreciate it. You are very welcome and thank you. I mean, I enjoyed it and I enjoy your interview style. You're you're very comfortable and I think you you do great interviews for your listeners. Thank you. Have an amazing day. Thank you. You do the same. Thank you for listening and investing in yourself with your time. I so appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would be forever grateful if you would be willing to leave a rating, a review in whatever app you use for your podcast. I know that's what really bumps it up in the rankings. And I would so appreciate your time, especially if you've been a long time listener. But of course, if you like this episode and you're brand new, thank you for being here too. Have an amazing, amazing day.